It's time for a little history lesson. We're going to take a look at the history of quality comics, some undervalued golden age keys up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hey there, panelologists. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. This video, we're going to take a little bit of departure. We're going to do a history lesson, and we're going to talk about Quality Comics, the Golden Age publisher. But before we get started, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. We're this far away from 4,500 subscribers. Follow us on Instagram, Bronzeville underscore comics, whatnot, Bronzeville underscore comics. Link in the description. If you use that on whatnot and you haven't yet tried it, you get $5 off your first purchase. And there's also... Um, links to my email and my eBay store. If you are going to, I'm probably going to Terrificon on Saturday. Um, say hi if you see me. I still am unsure of what my plans are. I don't know if the kids are coming. I don't know what I'm doing. So come on and say hi if you see me. Um, it should be a lot of fun at the show. Anyway, let's get started and to talk about Quality Comics. And Quality Comics was one of the big publishers during the Golden Age, and they're not timely. They're not DC, but the characters have remained in the consciousness of comic book collectors because DC subsequently, much like with Fawcett, acquired, and Charlton in the 60s acquired those uh, characters. Now, uh, Quality Comics uh, published books from 1937 through 1956, and it was founded by Everett Busy Arnold, um, and he was busy publishing comic books and a lot of them. The first comic book that they did was Feature Funnies in 1937, which much like a lot of other comic books of the day, was a collection of old newspaper strips. There was some original material. Um, and eventually they started their own anthology titles that included a lot of different characters eventually jumping on the superhero bandwagon to great success. Uh, and they had they were quality because they had some of the greatest artists of the Golden Age working on their titles. Uh, Lou Fine, Will Eisner, Reed Crandall, Fred Gardner, Mac Raboy, Jack Cole, Paul Gustafson. Um, later on, Nick Carty, Joe Kubert. Uh, you can look at a quality comic from the 1940s and very often find some really great artwork, even by contemporary standards. Um, now, the first time that it was known as quality comics on the cover of a book was in 1940 with Crack Comics number no. 5. Um, and eventually, as the interest in superheroes waned, uh, they moved into some other genres like romance, war. They didn't really get into much horror. Or they did have a little bit of horror. Um, and by 1956, Quali decided to fold up shop and sold the, their properties to DC. Now, there's always been some confusion uh, legally about the copyrights to the old stories because a lot of those old stories have been published by uh, publishers who sort of uh, have an expertise in publishing public domain stories. Uh, AmeriComics, Bill Black's organization, has published a lot of quality comic uh, stories. DC has republished, starting in the really in the 70s, um, a little bit earlier on, but in the 70s, they started to lean hard into their, oh, their, their, their Golden Age characters. Now, when DC acquired the rights to quality comics, they continued to publish four titles. Robin Hood, which only ran for another eight issues. The three other titles that DC continued to publish would run for well over a decade or more. Heartthrobs, which is a romance book, ran until 1972. Black Hawk ran until 1977 and then came back, continuing the numbering between 82 and 84. And GI Combat, the war book, ran all the way through until 1987 for another 31 years. <clears throat> so... They did have success with those titles, and they did introduce a Plastic Man title in 1966, but Plastic Man had been dormant um, for the decade after DC acquired it. 
And then DC really hit on um, using some of the characters in 1973 when they introduced the Freedom Fighters. Um, and they introduced them as a pocket of superheroes who had... Now, the Blackhawks, and by that time, Plastic Man, had already been well integrated into DC continuity, um, having... I believe they both had had crossovers with Superman and Brave and the Bold. But what... Um, they did in 1973, when in reintroducing the Freedom Fighters, <clears throat> they introduced them as being from a parallel Earth. Now, DC had introduced the idea of Earth-1 and Earth-2 with the Justice League and Justice Society in the early 60s and kind of expanded that, Earth-3 with the Crime Syndicate and Earth-A with, and so on and so forth. They went with Earth-X, and Earth-X was an Earth where uh, the Nazis had won World War II and continued to stay in power, and the Freedom Fighters were comprised of six superheroes from Quality's Golden Age, Black Condor, The Ray, The Human Bomb, Doll Man, Uncle Sam, and Phantom Lady. Now, Phantom Lady has a peculiar history because she did start as a character with a yellow costume and green cape who was a Quality Comics superhero. And she was created by the... Eisner Iger Studios, which later just became the Iger Studios, which were headed by Will Eisner and um, Jerry Iger. And it was a bunch of artists, and they produced content for different publishers during the Golden Age. A lot of superhero content. Um, so what happened was when Quality stopped publishing Phantom Lady stories, Iger Studios believed that they had the rights to the character, and they published Phantom Lady with Fox Features in the later 40s, the character then had a blue costume and a red cape instead and had her own series, including some very well-known covers um, drawn by Matt Baker, including, I think it's Phantom Lady 17, that classic Headlights cover, which, you know, was one of the top sell sellers of the Promise Collection and one of the most sought-after covers of the Golden Age. So it's kind of two distinct Phantom Ladies. The Phantom Lady that DC brought back was... Sandra Knight, the original from the quality books. Um, and those four, those six characters kind of continued in different stories. They had their own 15 issue series, which abruptly ended during the DC implosion of 1978. They uh, brought in Firebrand. Later, Roy Thomas used a lot of the characters in his um, All Star Squadron uh, series. And what was explained by DC on Earth X. Plastic Man and the Blackhawks died. They were killed by the Nazis, and these six remained. In Freedom Fighters, they had, by the time they got their own series, they had liberated Earth-X from the Nazis, and they came over to Earth-1 to continue their adventures. Uh, there were later reboots of characters like the Ray and Black Condor. Uncle Sam has been reimagined um, a couple of different times by DC. Uh, as the Phantom Lady has been rebooted. She had a sh series in Action Comics Weekly. She's been a backup character uh, numerous times. Um, and so the, uh, the Uncle Sam and the Freedom Fighters have had a couple of series over the years. So the characters DC has continued to use to retain the trademarks. I believe what the legal part of it is, they don't have the copyrights to the old stories, but they do have the trademarks to the characters, which, which is what they purchased from Quality in 1956. So what I want to do is I want to run down the 30 highest selling books uh, that were published by Quality. Now, uh, these are CGC graded for the most of them. I think there might be one raw book here. Um, no, I think they're all graded. And <clears throat> the... Um, these are in different grades, so it's hard to do direct comparisons of a 7.5 to a 9.2 and completely different years. These don't sell frequently, and I do think some of these are undervalued because um, these are classic Golden Age heroes that aren't completely forgotten. And they're also um, characters that do have that potential to be used by DC in their cinematic universe. So let's start with number 30, Crack Comics number 27, which is the first appearance of a character known as Captain Triumph. They were twin brothers. One died and the other one had the ability, I think, by touching a birthmark to summon his dead brother, which had superpowers. Kind of a, a strange character. Now, that, that Crack Comics does have a great cover by Alfred Andreola um, and the creator of Captain Triumph. And so... 
That book sold uh, in a CGC 9.6 for $4,100 in 2019. Number 29 on the list is Torchy number one. Uh, Torchy was a character that was created by the artist Bill Ward. She's quite popular among people who collect good girl art of the time. Uh, and some of the covers that in her short-lived solo series, this uh, I think that was from 1949, an 8.0 sold this year for $4,560. Number 28 is a kind of a favorite of mine. Um, it's Hit Comics number 25. Yeah, Kid Eternity is a dead kid uh, who was killed by a Nazi U-boat along with his grandfather, but there was a mix-up. He wasn't supposed to die just yet, so they let him stay on Earth, and he has this buddy, Mr. Keeper, um, and he Kid Eternity has the ability to summon characters from throughout history to help him on his adventures. Uh, there was a DC miniseries and later an ongoing series, the miniseries written by Grant Morrison in the late 80s, and Kid Eternity has been used uh, since then. There was also a retcon during the 1980s where it was revealed that he was the brother of Freddie Freeman, Captain Marvel Jr. Um, and that, in a 9.2, sold for $4,750 in 2016. Police Comics number 12 is 27th on our list, and that is the first appearance of Ebony, the um, racially insensitive character created by Will Eisner for the um, spirit strip. Uh, that is a book that is 9.4, sold for $4,800 in 2018. Number 26 is the most recent book on the list, and it's a book I discussed a little bit earlier. It's G.I. Combat number one, number one in the long-running war series from 1952. So Quality only published G.I. Combat for four years. DC did so for 31 more. Um, two... Different books in the same grade in different years sold for the exact same amount. A 7.5 sold in 2021 for 5280 same price that a 6.5 sold for in 2019. Number 25 on the list is a classic. It's Spirit Number 1, the classic character created by Will Eisner. A 9.4 sold in 2021 for $5,520. The Spirit originated in newspaper strips in his own... Um, Insert in newspapers in the uh, the Sunday Funnies back in the 40s, created by Will Eisner. Frank Miller did a very poorly received movie a number of years ago, uh, and but the spirit has remained bumping around to different publishers. I think Harvey had him in the 60s, and then Kitchen Sink, and DC's been publishing a lot of stories since. Will Eisner, there were two characters that Quality had published, Spirit and Lady Luck, that Will Eisner retained the trademark to, uh, and, um, you know, he continued after quality spirit was gone by the mid forties from quality comics. And he was replaced by a very similar character known as midnight, very similar looking. Um, that's number 25 on the list, number 24 on the list and number 20, actually two a uh, tied for number 23 are two very similar comics that sold for the exact same odd price of $6,573. They're national comics, number 16. And number 18, both sold as 9.6s, one in the number 16 in 2010 and number 18 in 2014. They are classic Reed Crandall covers. Reed Crandall was uh, most notably the artist on much of the Black Hawk run um, and these classic World War II covers. Number 22 on the list, Doll Man number eight, which is the first appearance of Torchy, who we talked about when she had her own series, again, created by Bill Ward. Um, that in a 9.2 in 2021 sold for $6,600. Number 21, National Comics, number five, another of the anthologies. Um, we'll talk more about it, that in a couple of minutes. That's the first appearance of Quicksilver. Nope, not Scarlet Witch's brother, not that Quicksilver. This was uh, a character only in the Golden Age, he's only known as Quicksilver. He didn't have an alter ego, didn't have a secret identity. Um, later, it was revealed the, that when they used him in the Flash series in the 90s, maybe in the 80s, but definitely in the 90s, kind of he served as the mentor to Impulse. Uh, he was it was revealed that he was uh, known as Max Mercury and he was like the first to access the Speed Force. Uh, his first appearance in an 8.0 sold in 2020 for $6,600. Number 20 on the list, Police Comics number two, which is a 
a lot of second appearances because all these characters had first appearances in Police Comics number one, which we'll talk about quite a bit later on the list. A 9.4 sold in 2018 for $7,100. Uh, there's a two-way tie for 18th. Both sold for $7,170. Hit Comics number 18, a 9.6 sold for that in 2017. That is the first appearance of Stormy Foster, who's a character that really didn't survive until the modern age. You can see he's like wearing these little tidy whitey shorts. Um, maybe his visual look just hasn't been appealing enough. Uh, so um, I don't believe it's a rights issue, but I could be wrong. Um, one of the, in modern times, one of the less known quality comics characters and also tied for that same amount is National Comics number one, a 7.5 sold for that amount back in 2007. And that is the first appearance of Uncle Sam, who was the leader of the Freedom Fighters, is like the Uncle Sam who wants you for the U.S. Army. Um, and he's like the spirit of America has uh, kind of, you know, powers of super strength and, and vulnerability. Uh, a lot of mystery around him, and there have been um, follow-up series to flesh out his origin. He was originally drawn by Will Eisner. So, um, who created him. Um, he's been used he's been used quite a bit, and as I said, had his own series with that's been called Uncle Sam and the Freedom Fighters. Um, number 17 on the list is Crack Comics number one. The first appearance of Black Condor, who became a member of the Freedom Fighters and also had, there was a second iteration of Black Condor that was used later on. A 9.2 sold in 2019 for $8,122. Now, their first anthology, no, I assume it was the second anthology. Uh, the first was um, Feature Comics. The second one, this is a book from 1939, Smash Comics number one, a 9.0 sold in 2017 for $8,200. It's the first appearance of several characters, including Bozo the Iron Man. And the one character who was used, he was used by Roy Thomas in All-Star Squadron, that's the Invisible Hood, and also has this classic robot versus gorilla cover. Um, so, you, you know, how many of those can you have? Uh, number 15 on the list, another um, first appearance of a character who became a member of the Freedom Fighters, and that is um, The Ray in Smash Comics number 14. That book sold back in 2012 in a 9.6 for $8,213. So, I mean, it's all like extrapolation. What would these books be worth today? And a 9.6 for a early 40s book is quite pricey. It's probably from 40 or 41. Um, the Ray had some great art uh, on it, I think, uh, I do believe it was Lou Fine who did the art on the Ray. Uh, and he was a member of the Freedom Fighters. Another iteration of the character had his own series from DC. And if you are a fan of the Arrowverse, when they did the crossover with Earth X, the Ray was a prominent character in that storyline. Number 14 on the list, Dollman number one. Uh, the first tiny superhero. Uh, his first uh, first issue of his ongoing series sold 16 years ago, back in 2007, for $8,365 in a 9.4. Um, Dollman was one of the few characters to have his own ongoing series. Um, basically, it was he, Blackhawk Spirit, and Uncle Sam, uh, off the top of my head. <clears throat> um his series lasted well into the late Golden Age. Uh, his solo series, it was a quarterly, I believe, and then became bi-monthly. It lasted all the way until 1953 with issue number 47. So Dollman did hang on there for, for, for quite a while. He's one of the last, um, I guess, the last heroes of the Golden Age. I would say, along with the Captain Marvel from Fawcett, uh, he was one of the last holdouts to have his own ongoing series. Uh, obviously, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superboy continued through into the Silver Age. But I believe by 1953, Flash was done. All-Star Comics was done. Uh, a lot of those um, were, were already finished. Uh, although Black Hawk did... Yeah, Black Hawk actually did continue, although not technically a superhero. They can, did continue their own series. 
Um, number 12 is another tie at a very odd price point. Um, Plastic Man number one, uh, first of his ongoing series. Yeah, uh, actually Plastic Man, DC did not continue publishing Plastic Man. He lasted for 64 issues in his own self-titled series, which lasted all the way until 1956 when Qual uh, Quality gave up the ghost and DC decided not to continue Plastic Man, which kind of points to the fact that maybe they were steering away from superheroes at that point. Uh, they did bring him back 10 years later in his own number one uh, under DC. Uh, and that's tied with Hit Comics number seven, which is a, is a cover by this classic skull bondage cover that uh, also sold for $10,158 back in 2017. Number 11 on the list is Police Comics number 11, which sold in 2014 and a 9.2 for $11,054. And that is the first time that the spirit appeared in a standard comic book. He had appeared in his own Sunday inserts, uh, comic strips, I guess, or um, you know, basically in newspaper uh, comics. But in a standard comic book format, this was the first appearance of the spirit, of course, created by Will Eisner. Number 10 on the list, feature comics number 27, which sold in a 9.0 back in 2007 for $11,353. First appearance of Doll Man. And again, Doll Man lasted well into the late golden age until 1953. Number nine on the list is Uncle Sam number five, a classic World War II cover. There was a sale this year of an 8.0 for $12,000 of this book. Um, and you can see Uncle Sam fighting Hitler, Mussolini, and uh, Hirohito. No, not Hirohito. Was it Tojo? I never used Hirohito. Anyway, um, Let's move on. The uh, number eight on the list is Police Comics number five, which is the first cover um, featuring Plastic Man prominently on the cover as opposed to just one of the floating heads. Uh, that sold in 2018 and a 9.6 for $13,710. Um, number seven on the list, more for grade than anything else, Hit Comics number four, an early Hit Comics. First appearance of Betty Bates, who's not a, a, an important character. But in 2017, a 9.8, a 9.8 sold for $17,925, just a ridiculous um, 9.8 uh, from that early. Number six on the list, and this is a um, National Comics number seven, uh, sold back in 2004, 9.6 sold for $20,700. It is just a classic cover by Lou Fine. Lou Fine's one of my favorite artists of the Golden Age. Um, and if you're looking at the covers that I'm putting into these videos, maybe you'll see why. In, in general, look at, if you look up, you can look up like the, the, the covers of quality comics. There's some great ones for the Golden Age. I think very underappreciated. Um, number five on the list is Hit Comics number one. Um, which was one of the early anthologies. It's the first appearances of Blaze Barton, Hercules, Neon the Unknown, and the Red Bee, who used bees. Yes, he did, to fight crime. And that is a valuable book. 2022, obviously the height of the comic boom, but still it's a golden age book. An 8.5, which is the lowest grade of any book in the top eight, sold for $26,400. Um, again, it's number one with a lot of first appearances. Number four on the list uh, is a huge key, and it's been a little bit hotter lately. I mean, if a Golden Age book, which has very few on the census, can be hot, it is Police Comics number one, which is the first appearance of The Human Bomb, Phantom Lady, Firebrand, and Plastic Man. Uh, a 9.4 that sold back in 2014 for $38,848. Uh, that is the oldest sale of any book in the top five. And of course, we talked about Phantom Lady. Human Bomb was also a member of the Freedom Fighters. But Plastic Man really is the headliner created by Jack Cole. Um, there have been talk about developing him into movie properties for years. He did have an animated series in the late 70s, I think it was, a Saturday morning cartoon, uh, and has been more and more a part of DC continuity. Now, the thing is about Plastic Man, Plastic Man was very much a humor strip, uh, a humor storyline, um, because Plastic Man is just kind of weird. Uh, he is the predecessor of all those stretchy superheroes like 
Mr. Fantastic or Elongated Man. Um, and it's a lot more comedic tone. And so I'm not, DC hasn't always been sure of how to put him into um, like team settings, like the JLA. He's always been kind of an odd fit. Number three on the list. And this is the highest ranked of a number one issue. It's another one of their um, anthology books. And it's military comics, number one. First appearance of the Blackhawks. A 9.4 sold in 2018 for $52,580. Um, the Blackhawks continued forever. I mean, they, they ran continuously in their own book from the 40s into the late 70s, rebooted in the 80s. Howard Chaikin uh, did a miniseries, and then Kyle Baker took over with an ongoing series after that. Um, so Blackhawks have been around quite a bit. They even had their own uh, movie serial in the 1940s. Uh, it is a team of aviators from different, countries that were occupied by the Axis nations. The main character, uh, Janusz Prochaska, is Polish. There are uh, characters from France. There's a racially insensitive depiction of a Chinese character, Chop Chop. Um, but the, these the characters did have staying power uh, for sure. So of any of the characters um, that were created by quality other than the spirit, which is kind of created separate from quality and then came in um, as quality. I guess uh, Iger Eisner gave, Studios gave permission to use them in the comics um, to give another avenue for sales. But for something that was created in the quality comics banner, and it, it, Black Hawk was the one that has continued the most steadily over the years. Now, the last two are just simply cover buys. Number two on the list is uh, a book that I've seen uh, people, including Automatic Comics, talk about recently. I think he had picked up a copy of it. And it's Spirit number 22, which in a 9.6 last year sold for $57,600. Um, classic cover by Will Eisner, a femme fatale, which he loved to use in the Spirit storylines. The character is uh, called Skinny Bones, and she was based on the actress Lauren Bacall, Lauren Bacall uh, was an actress who appeared um, in several movies in the late 40s alongside her husband, Humphrey Bogart, uh, including Key Largo. And they, they're considered a classic Hollywood romance, despite the fact that he was like 30 or more years older than her. Um, so the, the classic cover by, and it's one of those, you know, for folks who enjoy good girl art, this is a classic example, and it's a classic Will Eisner cover. Number one is not a good girl art. It is a classic Lou Fine cover. Um, it is Hit Comics number five, which in 2017, a 9.4 sold for $59,750. And the character on the cover is the Red Bee. And he is wrestling a swordfish. Um, but it's just as depicted by Lou Fine, it is to me so engrossing. It, it is one of the great covers of the Golden Age. Um, and I think the prices point that out. The Red Bee was one of those characters that. Roy Thomas did use an All-Star Squadron and has been used uh, a little bit subsequently. I mean, once you get past the, um, you know, the fact that he uses bees uh, to help him on his crimes and he has like pink chiffon sleeves, um, you know, it, it is a pretty interesting character. I think what makes the character great is when it's drawn by Lou Fine. So let me know what you think about this. What do you know about quality comics? Do you think these comics are undervalued for Golden Age? Um and there, you can see these these high grade books aren't treated quite often. Um, so let me know what you think about the list. I know there's a lot to go through. Um, thanks for stopping by. Uh, in the meantime, take a look at a couple of my other videos here. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.